I recently found my old MacBook Air 2017 model lying in my collection. I stopped using it as it does not support the newer versions of macOS. So, I recently came across this amazing tool called OpenCore and brought my old MacBook back to life. And I have successfully managed to install macOS Sequoia on it. As you can see that this is my MacBook Air 2017 and I have managed to update it to macOS Sequoia. So in this video, I will share a step-by-step -step guide on how you can install macOS Sequoia on any unsupported Mac. So first, let's talk about the requirements. So we will need a USB drive with a minimum of 32 gigs of storage. Then we will need the OpenCore legacy patcher. So I will share all the download links in the video description below. For running OpenCore, make sure your MacBook is from 2008 or newer. If your MacBook is older than 2008 model, you won't be able to run OpenCore Legacy Patcher on it. To find the complete list of the supported models, you can go to their official website and check out the list. For this video, I am using a 2017 MacBook Air which only supports macOS Monterey and the later versions like macOS Ventura, Sonoma, Sequoia and Tahoe are unsupported. So I will be installing macOS Sequoia on my 2017 Mac. So let's get started. The first step is to update your old Mac to the latest version of the supported macOS version. Just go to software updates and make sure your Mac is updated to the latest version of the supported macOS. For me, it's macOS Monterey 12.7.6. Next, open any browser and search for OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Now, click on the GitHub link of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Scroll down a bit and then you will see the release section. As you can see that the current latest version is 2.4.0, so just click on it. Again, scroll down below and you will see the assets section. Here, click on opencorepatcher.pkg file and your downloading will begin. As I have already downloaded this file, so I will skip this process. Once the file is downloaded, it's time to insert your USB drive. So make sure you are using a USB drive with a minimum of 32 GB of storage. Now wait for a while until your USB drive is detected. Once detected, the next step is to double click on the opencorepatcher.pkg file. So these are the basic installation steps of opencore legacy patcher. Just continue with the installation steps by typing in your password and then clicking on the install software button. So this will take a while and your OpenCore Legacy Patcher will be installed on your Mac. Once the installation is complete, click on the close button. Now, open your launchpad and then click on the OpenCore Patcher application. So this will take a while and then you will see your OpenCore Legacy Patcher application. First, we will begin by creating a bootable installation media for your patched Mac OS Sequoia. So just click on Create Mac OS Installer and then click on Download macOS Installer. Now, OpenCore Legacy Patcher will find all the available macOS installer versions for you to download. So these are all the available macOS versions that you can choose from. We have macOS Monterey, Ventura, Sonoma and macOS Sequoia. To view all the available beta versions, you can click on Show Older Beta Versions. The list will expand and you will be able to view more versions to choose from. For this guide, I will select macOS Sequoia Beta 15.6 as this is the available latest version. Now click on the download button. Now the downloading will begin and this will take a while depending upon the speed of your internet connection. So here I am getting around 10 Mbps downloading speed and it took me around 31 minutes for the complete download. After the download is complete, OpenCore will validate the downloaded macOS installer. This will additionally take around 3 minutes. Once the validation is complete, OpenCore will start extracting the macOS installer. This will additionally require 2 minutes of your time. Once everything is complete, you will see the Create Mac OS Installer pop-up. With this, we will now create a bootable installation media for macOS Sequoia. Just click on Yes and it will start fetching our downloaded macOS. Here, select the macOS Sequoia installer that we have just downloaded and click on it. Now select your USB drive. So make sure your USB drive is visible here. If not, kindly eject it and then insert your USB drive again. Once done, click on it. 
As you can see that it says that all the data on this USB drive will be lost. So, make sure there is nothing important saved onto this drive. Once confirmed, click on Yes. Now, OpenCore will start creating a bootable installation media for your patched macOS Sequoia. Depending upon the speed of your USB drive, this process can take up to 30 minutes. For me, this complete process of creating a bootable USB and its verification took around 30 minutes. Once done, you will see the confirmation pop-up. Now it's time to install OpenCore onto a USB drive. So just click on Yes. Now click on Install to Disk. So this is an important step. At this point, we need to install OpenCore onto our USB drive and not our main Apple hard drive. So you need to carefully select your USB drive. So click on Disk 2, which is your USB drive and then select the EFI volume. With this, it will start installing OpenCore to your USB drive. Once the process is complete, you will see the reboot option. Just leave it as it is and click on Launchpad. Now, search for Disk Utility and open the application. This is another crucial step. So, I will create a separate volume for my patched macOS Sequoia and I will keep my macOS Monterey running with it. So this means that I will be able to run both my macOS Monterey and my macOS Sequoia on my Mac. If you directly want to upgrade your macOS Monterey to macOS Sequoia, you can skip this part. So this is my macOS Monterey volume. To dual boot both macOS Monterey and macOS Sequoia, just click on the plus sign. So I will name it macOS Sequoia and then click on the add button. As you can see that now I have one volume for macOS Monterey and another volume for macOS Sequoia. I will install macOS Sequoia separately onto this volume to be able to run both my macOS versions. Once done, click on the close button. Now you need to click on the reboot button. While rebooting, you have to press and hold the options key to get into the boot menu. Now wait for a while and then you will see the Apple logo followed by the boot options. Now here, you have to click on EFI Boot. You can see the OpenCore logo and the USB drive icon on the EFI Boot. So use your mouse cursor and then click on it. Now you will see two options. Just click on Install macOS Sequoia. So now we will begin with the installation steps of macOS Sequoia. Just wait for a while on the Apple logo and then you will see the language screen. Just select your language and click on the continue button. Under macOS recovery, you will see these options. Just select install macOS Sequoia and click on continue. If you wish to remove your previous version of macOS, you can go to disk utility and erase your hard drive. Since we are dual booting, I will just click on install macOS Sequoia and click on continue. Now click on continue again. Now accept the terms and conditions and then click on the agree button. Now here, you will find both our volumes, the macOS Monterey one and the fresh one that we created for our patched macOS Sequoia. So select macOS Sequoia and then click on the continue button. So this process will take some time and install macOS Sequoia on your old unsupported Mac. For me, it took around 40 minutes for the complete installation. So just to let you know, your Mac will restart several times during this process. Even if you see the boot menu, you don't have to press or select anything. Just stay calm and patient and let the Mac do its job. After around 40 minutes and 5 restarts, you will see the macOS post-installation steps. So here, just select your country and click on continue. Under transfer your data to this Mac, you can select setup as new and then click on continue again. Under Written and Spoken Languages, click on Continue again. Click on Not Now under Accessibility. Now select your Wi-Fi network, type in your password and then click on Continue. Under Data and Privacy, click on Continue again. Here you will have to now create a Mac account. Just type in your full name, your account name, followed by your password. Once done, click on Continue. This will take a while and then you will have to sign in to your Apple account. 
If you wish to skip, you can click on setup later. Otherwise, just type in your Apple account email and password to log in directly to your Apple account. Once signed in, click on continue. Now here, you will need to type your old macOS Monterey password. So this is your account login password for your old macOS Monterey. Once typed, click on continue. Now select your time zone by clicking on your location on the map shown. And then click on continue. Here, you can enable or disable your file vault and then click on continue again. Once done, under update Mac automatically, click on continue. Once everything is complete, you will see the welcome screen of your new macOS Sequoia. So congratulations, you have managed to successfully install macOS Sequoia on your unsupported Mac. But wait, the steps are not yet over. Let me just move back to my screen recording and show you the few final steps. Once your installation is complete and you have logged into your Mac, just wait for a couple of minutes for the Open Legacy Patcher to open up automatically. If even after 5 minutes you don't see this pop-up, just go to Launchpad and open the Open Core application. So now, as you can see that we are currently booting from a USB drive. To be able to boot directly from a hard drive, we need to install Open Core onto our main hard drive. To do that, click on OK. Now click on Install to Disk. So we previously installed Open Core on our USB drive. But this time, we have to install it directly onto our Macintosh hard drive. So now, select your main Apple SSD drive, that is disk 0. Click on EFI to install Open Core onto your Apple SSD. So this will take a while and then install Open Core onto your hard drive. After this, you will no longer need your USB drive to boot into your macOS Sequoia. Once the installation is complete, click on the reboot button to restart your system. After the restart, we are only left with the last step. So open Launchpad and click on the Open Core application. Once the app is opened, you need to click on Post Install Root Patch. So if you see this pop-up again saying that your Open Core is booting from your USB drive, you can ignore this and click on the Cancel button. We have already installed Open Core on our hard drive. On this Post Install Root Patch menu, click on Start Root Patching. With root patching, Open Core will detect all your hardware automatically and install the required drivers and patches to your system. As you can see, Open Core is detecting all your hardware and then installing or upgrading any required drivers or packages. Once all the root patches have been added, you will need to restart your Mac to apply the necessary changes. So that's it. You have successfully installed macOS Sequoia on your unsupported Mac. Now, if we talk about the macOS updates, updates on Open Core are released a little bit later than the official updates. So you can go back to settings and check for updates. If there are any new updates, you can directly install it from the settings app. Once any update is installed, you need to open the Open Core application from the launchpad. Then click on post install root patches every time you get the new updates. Now, since we dual booted and we have both macOS Monterey and macOS Sequoia installed, so if you wish to use the old macOS Monterey, just restart your Mac and press and hold the options key. Once you see the boot menu, you need to select the EFI boot that has your hard disk logo on it. So just click on it and then you will see both macOS Sequoia and macOS Monterey. Now you can select the operating system that you wish to use. You can use the same process to switch between both your macOS versions. So that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you face any issues, just comment down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos like these. I'll see you in the next one.